Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Sorry for taking time to upload new video and share the progress. As I was traveling overseas and at the same time due to the scarcity of the sensor and the other materials, I have to pause the mock-up suit development process at this moment. Also, I needed some income to run my daily life. That's why I have started my professional life again with some commitment. At the same time, while I was waiting for the sensors, I thought of learning and working on something else. Although there are no relevance of those learnings to the current progress of building mock-up suit or game development, but in the long run, it will come into play. It's called asset management or inventory management, which is a systematic approach to the governance and the realization of the value from the things that a group or entity responsible over their life cycle. It may apply both to tangible assets and to intangible assets. In my current product development, if I consider all the materials like sensors, batteries and software are individual assets, then all these items should have a life cycle. And it needs to be maintained by a systematic process of developing, operating, maintaining, upgrading and disposing in the most cost-effective manner. It means each item will have an individual life cycle and it needs to be periodically monitored and assessed. Based on the conditional assessment, corresponding service or replacement plan needs to be drawn down. The term asset management is commonly used in engineering, the business world and public infrastructure sector to ensure coordinated approach to the optimization of costs, risk, service performance and sustainability. We'll talk more about it in upcoming episodes. I have taken an approach to build my own software on that and in last 6 months I have built a prototype which is more or less ready to go in production. Hence this video series is made to document the software development, business process and design of. This does not mean the mockup suit development is stopped, it will go in parallel thread. I will be uploading all my source codes to my Patreon site. You can visit to my Patreon site to read the complete paper and download the source code. If you are new to this channel, please consider to give a like and subscribe. That means a lot to me. As these are different topic other than game development, I am thinking to change my channel name. Please suggest a good name in the comment section below. Let us first look at the high level requirements and the scope of the application. Each asset is an entity which are identified by an unique ID. For example, a microwave oven. There are several types of microwave oven are available in the market. For example, let's take two of them. And each oven has a specific make and model with an unique asset tag or ID. The same tag is also linked with a purchase order or purchase received for warranty claim and service requirement. One of the microwave oven is at dining hall and other one is at kitchen. Let's say the oven's make, model and the purchase amount are different along with the warranty period. Considering the design life of the ovens are dependent on the manufacturer. The oven is in the dining hall has design life of 10 years and other one has a design life of 5 years. It is very much important to capture the location of the asset as location has a significant influence on the maintenance plan of the asset. In this example, the usage of the oven at the dining hall is higher than the oven at kitchen. Although the dining hall oven has a design life of 10 years, depending upon the usage or the duty factor, the degradation curve or the condition deterioration will be faster than other. Therefore, asset condition assessment, time to time and future forecasting is one of the important factors to plan the maintenance. While talking about the maintenance scheduling, it is important to forecast the repair and the replacement plan as well to avoid any uncertain situation or accidental damage. Assets like electrical equipment, say air conditioner, battery, smoke detector, network router, etc. which are considered as a critical assets. These assets need a service repair or replacement plan in advance to avoid any kind of unforeseen outage. This means conditional assessment and forecasting will also be used to determine the risk factor in terms of likelihood and consequences. I will drill down more on these requirements at a later stage. 
organizations or industries like mining telecom education and other service provider have millions of assets and keeping track of all the assets maintenance plan life cycle plan is very difficult and hence such software are required to automate the assessment and maintenance planning Recently, I have involved in such project and learned the concept and thought of building the application for me to use in the future. In my game development, there will be mock-up suit with 17 sensors attached and each of them have a battery. It is important to keep track of the assets in an application so that time to time I can plan for the maintenance activities. While planning the maintenance activities, it is important to forecast the cost to avoid the build shock in later. It means the operational expense forecasting and budgeting is another contributing factor in the maintenance plan. The cost of the assets are dependent on current market price. If I need to replace any asset in next 3 to 4 years, then the cost of the asset at that time will not be same as today due to inflation and other consumer price indexation or CPI factor. Hence, along with the maintenance plan, it is important to focus the future cost based on the goods and the service CPI trend. Such requirements are leading towards the machine learning and analytics side of the application. We'll explore more on it in upcoming episode. Now let's look at the architecture of the application. As the requirement is quite vast and open-ended at this moment, I need a framework to support my current and future requirements. At the same time, I do not want to spend money and time on the customization of the application. IT industries are very difficult to manage. In my experience, any small changes sometimes leads lot of people involvement, truckloads of money and years of time to implement. But in my case, I have implemented it in 6 months with maximum of $100 of investment. It is a framework and it is open-ended. At first, I need a database to store the data. For that, I did assessment between NoSQL or Document Database versus RDBMS. RDBMS means Rational Database Management System. Professionally and personally, I am an expert in Document Database. But looking at the skill, resource, availability and their price tag in the market, I have shifted my preference to RDBMS. There are so many databases available in that category. After a deep assessment between all the products like MySQL, MSSQL, Postgres, Oracle, Sybase, I have chosen Microsoft SQL Server. SQL Server Express version is free and can be used for production application. The way this application is constructed, later on if required, I can change it to something else as the SQL scripts are almost same in all other DBMS applications. Now it's time to look at the operating system. Microsoft SQL Server is not dependent on Windows. It can be installed in other operating systems like Linux or Mac. As there is no limitation or restriction, I have chosen CentOS which is a template of Red Hat Linux for the database hosting. For that, I have taken virtual machine on the cloud from VM Central Australia. Link is there in the description below. Although AWS or Azure are options, but I got better deals from VM Central. My server has 8 GB memory, 2 CPUs and 100 GB disk space. To install SQL Server, we need couple of commands to execute. Please find the link below in the description. If you find any difficulties, please do not hesitate to drop a comment below. For the client, I have installed SSMH, which is Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. I will be using my Windows desktop environment. I have downloaded the software and installed it. To connect to the remote server using the client which is residing on my Windows desktop, I need to open a port to the virtual machine. It is too risky from security perspective. It means anyone can access the database directly. SA is a super admin and if it is hacked, all my data will be easily compromised. To avoid that, at first I have secured the remote Linux box login mechanism using RSA public key authentication. Public key authentication is a secure logging method using SSH. Instead of password, the procedure uses a cryptographic key pair for validation. Although using a strong password helps prevent brute force attack, public key authentication provides cryptographic strength and automated passwordless login. This way, I am securing a bond between a client machine only to log in to the remote machine. More about that can be found in the link given below. Next, I have created SSH tunnel between my client machine and the remote server. More about the tunneling is given in the description below. The SSH tunnel I have created for the port 1433, which is a default port for SQL Server. 
Once the tunnel is set up, the database server at the port will be forwarded to my local machine and then I will be able to connect to the server as local host. Finally, I tried my SSMH to connect to the database as local host with SA username. If you need more information about it, let me know. Now it's time to review the database design. As my application is an open framework and I want the application to be 100% configurable without any customization in the source code, I have adopted a generic methodology to build the application which is JSON driven UI layout configuration and microservice approach to perform the application input output. To do that, I have created two tables, page to store the page layout in JSON format and services to store the application services or microservices. Application service will be written in functional scripting language like Python, JavaScript, etc. While building the application, I have considered to make it multi-tenant application. It means not only my assets will be managed, if anyone else wants to manage their asset in this framework can be used at the same time. Moreover, while building this application, I realized that the same framework can be used to make any other application other than asset management. Now to comply the multi-tenant and other application building procedure, I have created couple of more tables in the database called party, client, application, party group, party group relationship, access item, group role, app menu, etc. Every database entity has its own role to play in the application. Now let's move on to the server side to look at the service framework. I wanted my application server to be modular to support volume load and functionality specific models. For example, all background scheduled job will be performed by one application process and all APIs will be served by a different application process. Similarly, all analytics will be done by a separate application process. There are many reasons to choose Python over Java other than cost. One of the best possible reason could be the availability of the packages by the community like machine learning, REST framework, moreover performance. While choosing Python as an application server, at the same time, I do not want to use FTP or Linux Dix to manage the Python codes. As we know, Python is a functional programming language and script based. All the raw files will be stored in the server unless we compile it. This is one of the drawback we have. To avoid that, I have decided to store all the Python codes in the database. At this moment, I will be storing the Python codes as an ASCII format into the database. Once the application is matured, I will encrypt the code before storing into the database. It means I need an interface to allow user to write the code online and store it in the database. Sounds weird, but trust me, this works. Using this methodology, I will lose lot of Python aspects like code reusability, modularity and so on. But so far, I am happy with the structure and didn't face any restriction or problems. For the web server, I had options like Apache, NGNIX, Node and Django. I picked up Django as an API application server and Apache as a web server. You can find more details of those in the link given in the description below. I will go more in details later. Now let's move on to the web application. One of the questions organizations ask themselves at the start of a new project, which is do we adopt a component library or start from scratch? There are pros and cons to way and it depends upon the project scope and the priorities. For the web application, I have been looking for some templates like admin templates, configuration templates, general web page layouts and so on. Primarily the look and feel aspects. At the same time, I was looking for web development toolkits like Angular, React, Go. Last several years, I was using Google's Angular JavaScript framework. But this time, I have decided to move on to Facebook's ReactJS framework. Both are same initially, but after using it last 6 months, I can see the difference. ReactJS is more developer friendly and controlled in terms of performance, robustness and rendering. I also wanted to learn ReactJS and hence without any hesitation, I have chosen ReactJS to build the web application. One of the most popular component libraries is MUI, a comprehensive React UI library model at first on Google's material design. Now for the look and feel, I do not want to build anything from scratch and hence I have chosen React MUI component library. MUI is a massive library of UI components designers and developers can use to build their own React applications. 
The open source project follows Google's guidelines for creating components, which gives a customizable library of foundations and advanced UI elements. The primary benefits of using MUI React components are faster time to market, a single source of truth, design consistency, scalability, easy maintenance, accessibility, skills empowerment, and personalizations. I have chosen a template which are built using React MUI. Crema admin template which costed me $24. Links are there in the description below. It has all the ready-made components which can be easily plug and play to my project. Now I am all set to build the base application. In the next episode, I will be talking about the application setup and build the base application. Meanwhile, if you have any suggestions or queries, please do not hesitate to drop a line in the comment section below. I have uploaded the database structure in my Patreon site. Please feel free to download the same. On that note, I am finishing this video here. Please stay tuned for such interesting topic and the solution. Till then, stay safe and take care. Thank you for watching.